Could this stylish small SUV be the best thing offered up by the Japanese brand? Read on to see how the 2017 Toyota CHR Cobot 2WD stacks up. Bumblebee, we called it, this stunningly yellow example of automotive art that is known as the 2017 Toyota CHR. It's the top end Cobot model, not the all wheel drive version as tested by Paul recently, but the front drive version that we included in our recent small SUV test. And it came out on top. The safety focus is strong, though, with its adaptive cruise control operating at all way to stand still, and it has autonomous emergency braking, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert and lane keeping assistance. It scored the maximum 5 star ANCAP crash score, and has 7 airbags, dual front, front side, full length curtain, driver's knee. You need those electronic aids at times because the vision from the driver's seat isn't terrific. When you're trying to park you should almost just forget about glancing over your shoulder to get a gauge of your vicinity, it is called the CHR, Coupe High Rider, for a reason. Forward vision is good, though, and while you sit up reasonably high for that ever so desirable command position. The cabin is perhaps the most surprising thing about the CHR, and that's saying a lot, given how striking the exterior styling is. You can tell that the company allowed its designers off the leash in the cabin, with beautifully textured, almost arty finishes on show. Sure, the hard plastics on the doors aren't soft to the touch, but the quality of the finishes is brilliant, with a gorgeous diamond pattern with raised edges, not to mention soft. That swooping body doesn't have too large an impact on rear seat space, headroom is actually pretty good, and it is one of the roomier small SUVs for legroom. While the back seat comfort is good, on test we found it could feel a little bit closed and because of the black headlining and the way the rear doors are shaped, sharply curving up and away from the occupants. That means that kids mightn't like it very much, particularly if they're prone to travel troubles. There are some items missing, you don't get rear grab handles, nor is there a center armrest between the seats, and there are no rear reading lights. But it is good for loose item storage including bottle holders in the door grabs in the rear, big door pockets up front and a smallish center console bin. The dual-zone climate control features an air purification system that, it has to be said, is better in smoggy traffic-clogged tunnels than lots of competitor vehicles. Under the bonnet is a 1.2-liter turbocharged four-cylinder petrol engine with a slim 85 kilowatts of power, at 5,600 revolutions per minute and 185 newton meters from 1500 4000 revolutions per minute the numbers aren't high by turbo standards and not even really by class standards when you look at rivals with non-turbo four cylinders and it seems even more meager when you look at the peugeot 2008 which has a three-cylinder turbo with 81 kilowatts but 205 newton meters the suspension a mcpherson setup up front and double wishbone at the rear offers up a really nice blend of comfort and compliance with sure-footedness, and the quality of the execution of the chassis arrangement makes it feel composed and more premium than pretty much any other small SUV in the segment. Despite that premium feel, the Toyota ownership plan isn't as pricey as you might think. The brand requires the car to be serviced every 12 months or 15,000 kilometers, at a cost of $195 per visit which is cheaper than Mitsubishi, Honda, and Mazda, and unlike some other models from the brand, it's covered for 5 years slash 75,000 kilometers of servicing. Toyota can't match some of the lengthier warranty plans around, with a 3 year slash 100,000 kilometers plan and no included roadside assist.